arthropods. So earthworm belongs to the phylum Annelida. Okay. So about Annelida, more and more features you will discuss in, you will learn in first PUC. At the same time here, about um, insects, there are thousands of insects uh, commonly surviving around us. So these insects are belongs to the phylum Arthropoda. 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 Okay. So uh, commonly in our regular life, we will see in our home cockroach. So the scientific name of cockroach is Periplaneta, Periplaneta, Planeta Americana. It is a scientific name of cockroach. Cockroach. Okay. Uh, it is commonly we will see in our surroundings. Arthropoda. Okay, so the insects commonly belongs to the pylum arthropoda. About arthropoda, it is the second, um, so it is the first largest pylum in uh, animal kingdom. So about arthropoda features, uh, we will discuss uh, in first PUC. Okay, so cockroach, very commonly we will see in our home cockroaches. Okay, so how, how cockroach perform respiration, that is we will see. So cockroach have network of tubes. So see here, here there is a network of tubules like this way, network of tubules. Here like this network of tubes, tubules. It is connected to this is, it is connected to this is like this network of tubules. It is connected to this like this. It is and so on. This is network of tubules, network of tubules. Okay, so it is connected to this, it is connected to this, it is connected. It is connected to this, it is connected like this, it is connected, it is connected here, 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 and so on. Okay, in the same way here, okay, here a pair of openings are present. Okay, so here a network of tubes, these are all called network of tubes. Like us, they don't have special respiratory organ like uh, nose, etc. Okay, but uh, they perform some respiration through tube-like structure. That kind of a respiration is called tracheal respiratory system. Tracheal respiratory system. So cockroach or insects generally shows a kind of a uh, tracheal system through which transport atmospheric air into the body parts. See, so especially this is spirochils. Here, here spirochils are present. Spirochils, spirochils means what? It is a small, Aperture, small hole or pore, pore-like structure. There are 10 pairs of um, spirochils. 10 pairs of spirochils are present on either sides of the cockroach body. So it is, suppose you, uh, can, it is left side, it is right side. You assume this is left, it is right. So in this left side, 10, left side 10 will be there. This side 10 will be there. So first pair, second pair third pair, fourth pair, fifth pair, sixth pair, seventh pair, eighth pair, ninth, sorry. Okay, nine and 10. There are 10 pairs of spirochils are present. Here also, it is first pair, second pair, third pair, fourth pair, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, 10. So 10 pairs of spirochils through which atmospheric air entered into the cockroach. Okay, so uh, through this oxygen, oxygen is entered inside. Oxygen is entered inside. The oxygen is entered inside. Like this, through this oxygen is entered. So the oxygen through tubes um, transported to all the tissues, all the tissues and body cavities, etc. All the tissues. So when this oxygen is utilized by all the tissues, immediately in the tissues, what is formed? carbon dioxide is formed. So this carbon dioxide is expelled out through the same pathway. This is called tracheal respiratory system. About this tracheal respiratory system, more and more information, first few is there. Okay, that's all. This is the explanation about uh, uh, tracheal system in cockroach. In cockroach, there are many systems are there. Uh, uh, this is tracheal system, transport system, circulatory system, uh, nervous system, uh, excretory system, reproductive system, etc. Those are all in first few you see, we'll study that. This is the basic information you have to study. Okay, that's all. Next, here. At the same time, so spiders and scorpions. 
spiders and scorpions okay so these are also spiders and scorpions these are also uh, comes to uh, pilum arthropoda these are another type of species so these uh, will use uh, book shaped lungs for aerial respiration aerial respiration means what atmospheric oxygen is entered into the body parts entered into the body parts and here carbon dioxide is released carbon dioxide is released this carbon dioxide is expelled out okay this is called book shaped lungs see about this uh, even you have to study in first puc okay so um, that's all okay so about this if you get an idea in this um, bridge course so it becomes little bit easy okay so spiders and scorpions these are spider everybody knows that in homes com commonly will see scorpions it is a kind of a poisonous organism commonly survives in tropical areas tropical places okay so it is a poisonous um, organism so it has these two organisms have book shaped lungs these are called lungs see it is the first gill slit lung slit it is a lung slit it is a lung slit next space filled with blood see two this entire space is filled with blood okay these are book shaped lungs these are all entire filled with like lungs like this way these are entered straight line we can't drama so like this way the entire space is filled with lungs this entire space is filled with lungs okay that, that's a okay that's all okay next leaves of the book lungs three leaves of the book lungs these leaves of the book lungs these are all leaves of the book lungs it is a completely one book lung one book lung lung so this is the starting region these are all the leaves of the book lungs through which oxygen is entered inside through like this way it enters through which oxygen is entered inside so uh, through these book lungs it is circulated throughout the body and body parts sterilize oxygen and immediately releases carbon dioxide so from the all the body parts um, the carbon dioxide is entered into the blood that uh, through the blood carbon dioxide again comes here again comes here okay again reach to here in this part carbon dioxide again reach to these parts through the same pathway carbon dioxide is expelled out okay so this is a spiders and scorpions have book lungs for aerial respiration okay this is what um, uh, book through book lungs respiration book lungs are used by the uh, spiders and scorpions okay for aerial respiration Sima here, human lungs uh, not book lungs. Okay, so our human body lungs are sponge shaped structures. If you take sponge, take it sponge, take sponge to your hand and press it, it comes to contract. If you leave, it comes to original state. Okay, so if our lungs also like uh, spider uh, scorpion lungs such type of lungs are not uh, able to supply sufficient oxygenated blood throughout our body parts that's why in evolutionary changes spider scorpion body is made maximum so this much or in some like this much so book lungs are able to supply sufficient oxygenated blood throughout the body in this uh, body only in this levels of organization only but our body is 70 kgs 50 to 70 kgs okay so uh, according to age if you will consider so our body parts and our body parts utilization of oxygen varies so according to that if we have book shaped lungs so that book shaped lungs unable to supply sufficient oxygenated blood in human body parts that's why in evolutionary changes our lung is different from spiders and scorpions lungs that's all. next so special vascular structures special vascular structures are called gills gills are used by most of the aquatic arthropods 
and molluscus most of the aquatic arthropods see already i said arthropods some are terrestrial some are aquatic the arthropods which are surviving in aquatic habitats aquatic water habitats in them they will use gills see uh, terrestrial habitats the organisms which are living on planet their respiratory system is different the animals which are living in aquatic habitats their respiration is system okay that's all <clears throat> used by the most of the aquatic arthropods and molluscus molluscus it is second largest phylum in animal kingdom molluscus you will study in first puc it is second largest animal phylum generally molluscus are terrestrial terrestrial organisms are there and aquatic are aquatic some are marine some are marine habitat some can live in marine habitat some can live in some can live in aquatic habitats some can live in aquatic habitats some can live in aquatic habitats okay aquatic habitats so that is that is molluscus uh, some are lives in terrestrial habitats terrestrial habitats uh, snail snail okay this is called snail snail scientific name is pila globosa globosa okay so generally uh, some people these snails are eatable some areas uh, snails are uh, consumed by the human beings okay those are called snails okay next uh, octopus you might have seen octopus in uh, pictures or in movie theaters in movies octopus okay so these are called um, belong these are belongs to the phylum mollusca still more information more and more information is there about molluscus okay that is what you will study in second first puc okay so those are all will show gills okay so the gills um, here i will show to you the picture the gill picture i will show this is gill this is what gill okay so generally uh, through gills uh, okay see see generally this entire surface is water it is this is surroundings uh, excess amount of water is present okay this is water so the water is entered inside so generally in the aquatic habitats water the water is sorry in the water it is h2o in the water oxygen is dissolved dissolved so oxygen directly in does not enter into the aquatic organisms such type of um, mechanism they don't have so that this oxygen is dissolved in the water so from the water dissolved oxygen is entered how so the, uh, whether you have observed or not so fishes or any aquatic organisms if you clearly observe they always open their mouth they will like this they will blink their mouth so at that time excess amount of water is entered inside excess amount of water is entered inside see inhalation water is entered inhalation water is entered so along with water oxygen also released see through buccal cavity buccal cavity means nothing but oral cavity through oral cavity it is mouth mouth oral valves here valves are present through those valves oxygen is entered so here pharynx through this region these are called gills see gills in gills these are all first second third fourth one two three four so four pairs of gills are present generally in fish so um, the number of gills are varies from one species to another species here in this particular fish four pairs of um, gills are there through the gills this oxygen is uh, entered into the gill pouches in the gill pouches oxygen is absorbed by the gills and circulated to various body parts at that time immediately oxygen is released that oxygen is also released into the body parts released in this place only so here in between the gills there is a small gaps are there through these gaps carbon dioxide through these gaps carbon dioxide through water only expelled out okay excess amount of water through this water entered inside 
so in the water oxygen dissolved sheet of oxygen is absorbed by the gills in the gills uh, some blood vessels will be there through the blood vessels oxygen is supplied to, throughout the body parts so from all the body parts uh, oxygen utilized carbon dioxide is that carbon dioxide directly sent to, to these gill pouches from the gill pouches uh, the carbon dioxide again entered into the water so the carbon dioxide is released into the surroundings uh, medium in the surrounding medium however plants aquatic plants also will be there those plants uses carbon dioxide however sunlight will be there from the atmosphere sunlight they will be absorbed okay with the help of that they will be performed photosynthesis photosynthesis okay examples uh, there are number of number of plants those are diatoms diatoms phytoplanktons 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 these are all belongs to the uh, subclass chlorophyce 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 chloro means chlorophyll so uh, the plants contains chlorophyll and using these uh, synthesizes food material that food so huge quantity of food material is prepared that food is uh, consumed by aquatic animals okay like this way they will perform aquatic organisms performs respiration here if you see one point whereas vascular bag is called lungs are lungs i will show next among vertebrates fishes here now we are discussing gills gills already have shown next whereas vascular bag is called lungs lungs are used by terrestrial farms for exchange of gases already everybody knows that we are terrestrial organisms the animals which are living on uh, terrestrial habitats most of the organisms use lungs lungs a pair of lungs so that lungs picture and everything next step we will see after finishing gills uh, i will give explanation about uh, lungs okay so lungs are used by terrestrial farm terrestrial organisms for exchange of gases among vertebrates fishes and larva of amphibians use gills okay so fishes already we discussed now and also larva of amphibians see so um, generally here a little bit I will, i will give explanation see larva of amphibians so amphibians example is mainly frog okay so it is a female frog it is a male frog okay so it can release a sperms it can release a sova to the external medium medium external surface in between them fertilization takes place so this kind of fertilization is called external fertilization external fertilization the fertilization which occurs outside of the body is called external fertilization okay see here am i your doubts so i will clarify last let me finish this is okay so here see among vertebrates fish larva of amphibians these organisms shows external fertilization why so generally in for example if you will take human beings sperms and ova entered into the female body ova however occurs in female body sperms are from the male body entered into the female body in the female body fertilization takes place that is called internal fertilization internal fertilization development is direct direct means what directly young ones young ones are produced directly young ones are produced this is what in uh, human beings and some mammals but here in amphibians not like that male or female organism releases sperms female organism releases frog no oh, sorry female frog organisms female frog releases ova into the external medium in between them fertilization takes place that kind of fertilization is called external fertilization external fertilization so external fertilization after fertilization so those fertilized eggs gradually turn to be larva so fr frog belongs to the amphibian so we will call larva frogs those also use gills those are also use gills okay ma that's a larva of amphibians you use gills about this about this is huge information you will learn this is basic information still much information is that is in future you will study that
okay that's all next here come to the point whereas the reptiles uh, reptiles birds and mammals respire through lungs reptiles as you know very well the animals which creep on planet on our land on our planet those organisms are called reptiles okay so birds aves aves are nothing but birds okay so birds also uh, uh, respire through lungs only mammals mammals means we are buffalo sheep goat camel horse etc those organisms also respire through gills about gills uh, that is what we will discuss uh, sorry about lungs uh, we will discuss in human respiration next topic we will discuss human respiration only okay in human respiration we also respire mammal means we we also respire through lungs only about lungs complete information i will say just wait here amphibians like frogs respire through their moist skin and also lungs okay so like frog uh, sorry like uh, earthworm frog also respire through moist skin and lungs depends upon habitats mammals have well developed respiratory system all the mammals have well developed respiratory system comparatively remaining organisms humans mammals respiratory system is well developed all the organ all the parts are distinctly developed so here see types of respiration in frogs already it is we have discussed see just i will give brief review so frog also respire by three types cutaneous respiration respiration which takes place through the skin okay so this is assume this is the frog so frog is covered by skin skin through their skin it performs respiration that is called uh, cutaneous respiration along with the frog other organisms also respire through skin those are leeches frog scientific name of frog rana tigrina rana tigrina rana tigrina leech everybody knows that leech scientific name of leech is hirudinaria hirudinaria earthworm scientific name of earthworm is megascolex megascolex peritima peritima postuma postuma peritima postuma so in this it is one type one species of uh, earthworm it is one species of earthworm peritima postuma is very commonly found in in our surroundings salamander it is a kind of organism like a frog okay so along with frog these are all the organisms also respire through skin okay here about leech is one point i wanted to say to you see leech leech it contains uh, a kind of a anticoagulant factors in its uh, body when it will bite us it, when it will bite us immediately it releases uh, a kind of anti coagulants anti coagulants to prevent the blood clotting anti coagulants to prevent the blood clottings to prevent the blood clot anti coagulants to prevent the blood clottings to prevent the blood clottings so when uh, it will release anti coagulants in our body blood does not clot the blood remains liquid then happily uh, leech sucks the blood keeping this information in view our biotechnological scientists biotechnological scientists what they have collected the gene from the leech the gene which is synthesizing these anti coagulant factors listen carefully the gene which is synthesizing anti coagulant factors the gene which is synthesizing anti coagulant factor that gene is isolated from the leech the gene is isolated from the gene from the leech that particular gene is isolated from the leech and multiplied this particular gene this particular gene is multiplied through biotechnology and the same genes are produced number of genes so the, generally here one information D, dna gives rna dna gives rna this rna gives proteins proteins a kind of a protein is synthesized from the leech this protein used as anti clot buster anti anti clot buster anti clot buster in myocardial myo 
myocardial infra infraction patients cardiac patients in cardiac patients the blood is clot in blood vessels at that time the particular protein which is isolated from the leaches the particular protein which is isolated from the leaches that protein are injected that is called hirudin protein injected into the myocardial infraction patients at that time what happens the blood could not get um, clot the blood could not get clot in some heart patients uh, um, the blood gets clotted in uh, blood vessels the blood vessels which is supplying blood from heart to various body parts in those blood vessels the blood gets clotted so if this uh, protein is injected to those patients whatever may be the blood is clotted those clots are resolved those clots uh, are break down that's why it is called anti clot buster okay ma about this more information how genetically these genes are multiplied how this is genetically synthesized that is what in puc biotechnology topic when i will teach you will give information or else wherever you are studying biotechnology okay then you will get it okay ma that is about uh, leech generally we will think that leech is a dangerous organism it causes harmful effects yes it is a danger it causes harmful effects it sucks the blood but through biotechnology this dangerous organism are converted into useful organism okay like that in some of the countries earthworms are raw earthworms directly they will swallow to destroy the gout to disease kidney disease gout nothing but kidney disease so those species of earthworms destroy stones which are present which are occurred in kidneys to dissolve the stones in the kidney they will use a kind of earthworms okay that's like that okay that's the next pulmonary respiration so the respiration which occurs through lungs that is called pulmonary respiration our body lungs performs in respiration process those are called pulmonary respiration bronchial respiration respiration which occurs through gills already i have shown so gills also called bronchial so bronchial respiration so the bronchial respiration occurs mainly in tadpole larva frog fishes etc okay this is uh, types of respiration in frogs so now next various respiratory organs in different animals so see respiratory organs types of respiration animals see here respiratory organ lungs the major respiratory organ the respiration which occurs through lungs is called pulmonary respiration so the pulmonary respiration which of the organisms happens mammals birds reptiles amphibians you may get doubt here amphibians nurse or skin nurse yes amphibians according to situation gills the respiration which occurs through gills such kind of respiration is called bronchial respiration fishes crabs prawns tadpole larva frog so fishes everybody knows that like that fishes crabs also edible prawns also edible nice nutritious diet prawns okay tadpole larva frog in some countries frog is a staple food some of the country china people search they will give first breath to eat frog meat okay skin the respiration which occurs through skin is called cutaneous respiration earthworm leech amphibians trachea the respiration which occurs through trachea is called tracheal respiration that is called insects that's all next we will see here alveoli alveoli everybody knows about alveoli so the invertebrates in vertebrates sorry in vertebrates the lungs see here this is the lung i am showing picture here i am using tab on the tab diagrams neatly drawing not possible neatly like board how we will draw like that on the tab we cannot draw we cannot draw that's why i used this is in vertebrates lungs are made up of by several thousands of small chambers see here if you observe here these are all small